Hello everyone and welcome back, this is Sleepless Ninja. Today, I'm going to show you how to install Fastboot and ADB. Both of these are a part of the Android SDK. What are these used for? This is used for rooting your device, this is used for um, unlocking the boat bootloader, restoring a, a factory image, there are, and heavily in development when you're trying to develop an application, you will use this. So we begin by going in our browser and going to developer.android.com. At this website, there's a drop-down list um, right next to the developer's name, and you want to click on that drop-down list. And you can see, get the SDK, click right there, and now you're to a page where you can download the SDK um, for Windows. Now this guide is only for Windows. If you have a Mac or a Linux computer, this guide is not for you. I do have some videos, but they're not as detailed. My plan is to make one for each, so keep on checking and keep posted, and you will see those guides coming out shortly. So when the file is done, you want to run it. It is an executable. And if you have to allow any permissions, just yes, the permissions. And here we will begin installing the Android SDK toolkit. Now this is a wizard so it makes things a little bit easier. And just go next and then you're going to get to this point where it's going to either say that it detects the Java development kit and it's just going to continue or it will say it does not exist. So what you're going to want to do is click on that button and go to the website here and then just download the basic Java JDK. And what and this is necessary to run the Android SDK. I am highlighting it on the screen and this um, particular file just make sure that you download the one for your system so if you have a 64-bit operating system if you're not sure just do, do the x86 on Windows and it will work on either system and you want to do the same thing let's save it let's download it when it's finished run the executable right from the download yes to accept the permissions if your computer prompts you and you're just going to be clicking next through the installer you do have the choice of choosing installation areas and things like that just go with the basic unless you are you know tech savvy then you can change the path and all of that just because the basic way it just works now if you go in changing the path sometimes the installer can mess up and if you don't know how to specify environment variables or paths or have no idea what I'm talking about, then just just don't deal with this. Stick with the basics. Let it install itself. During the install, it will prompt you again. Just continue on through, select all those um, settings, and you'll be driven to the next um, part of the installation. There's two things that you have to install. This is the Java FX that comes with the package and just next through keep the defaults just like before. When this finish installs we want to go back to the Android SDK installer and here we're still going to get prompted that we need to install the JDK to rectify this all you have to do is press back and then go next again it will then recognize the JDK and we will continue on with the installation you will be prompt to install it for just your user or all users you might as well just install it for all users in the case that you make a new account or something like that and then this is very important we need to specify the path we want to specify the path under your username so under your users C users your username is where you want to make this path. It makes everything much easier in the end, just like it shows here in the um, video. Then you also want to do a backslash, just like on the screen, and write in Android-SDK. It actually can be anything, but just make it relate to the Android SDK so you know that is where it's located in your user profile. Then you just next do the rest of the setup and it finally install the Android SDK. When you finish the install, you'll be prompted to um, finish and start the SDK manager. Make sure that box is checked to start it. 
And in the SDK Manager, we want to focus on two things, the Tools folder and the Extras folder. In the Tools, make sure the SDK Tools and the SDK Platform Tools are checked off. And in the Extra, make sure that the Google USB Drivers are, are checked off. Now, for the Tools, the Platform Tools that you're downloading are actually ADB and Fastboot in there. So that's how we're going to get them. And in the Extras, the Google USB Drivers um, for any of your Google devices, it's going to be necessary to download this so you can communicate with it. If you don't have a, a Google device like the Galaxy Nexus or the Nexus 7 or any of the Nexuses, you will need to download the drivers from your manufacturer in order to get it to work with this Android SDK. So once you have those and ensure that they're checked off, you just want to install the packages. It does say two and or one. It, as long as they're all checked, um, it's fine and installed because it might be that they're already installed by default. And once this is finished, you just want to hit close and we are done installing the Android SDK. Congratulations. So let's just confirm this process by opening up my computer or Explorer and go to the C drive where we installed the Android SDK. Go to users, go to our user name and then find the Android SDK folder. Let's click in there and then let's click in platform tools and you will see there is ADB, ADB excuse me, and Fastboot. So we have six. Well thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to continue on and go step further into routing, unlocking bootloaders and things like that for the PC. I will also branch off into the Mac and the Mac is very similar to Linux so I'll try to couple them together if possible. Thank you so much everyone and have a wonderful day.